Welcome back to the presentation podcast. I'm Quira. I'm Laura. And I'm Mira. Thank you so much for all the wonderful feedback you gave us from the last one and all the like things you've been suggesting for us to do. If anyone has anything else they want us to do, any suggestions, just any general comments, please make sure to leave them. So today we're going to be talking about women's sport and we are joined with Miss Waldron, Miss Barry Murphy and Miss Drummond from Presentation Secondary School, Balfihan. Um, a few questions, some that ye have left and we will be playing a fun game with them. I'm Casey Waldron. I have been teaching in Pres Bafihan for the last three years. Um, I teach history and PE. Um, we got leaving Sir PE this year as well, so I'm really excited about that. And uh, LCA Recreation and Leisure too. Hey everyone, I'm Miss Barry Murphy. I'm a teacher of Geography and Business in Pres Bafihan, and I'm delighted to be here on the school's podcast today. Hi everyone, my name is Miss Drummond and I am a P and Irish teacher here in Presentation Secondary School about Fian. Um, and I'm teaching here, this is my third year here. What sports do you play and who do you play for? So my main sport would be kickboxing. Um, when I was younger, I used to kind of dabble in absolutely everything and anything that was going. Um, I suppose I kind of limited it then to maybe hockey when I was in secondary school um, and I just played for my school team back then which was the Arsene Black Rock and then I kind of I played for UCC for a year as well and I just didn't have enough time so I gave that up and focused on the kickboxing because I've been doing it since I was about seven so um, that was the main the main thing for me so I, um, I put all my time into that then really. So I play both camogie and ladies football and my club is Clidove. I play camogie with Clidove um, and we don't have a ladies football club um, with Clidove, but our parish um, has a ladies football club. So I play with St. Val's. They're my ladies football club. At the moment, we're not playing, but I play with um, Carrigaline United, so I play soccer and I've been playing with them since I was five or six um, and that's the only sport I've kind of ever played bare athletics um, with the school. So I used to do um, cross country and the sprint and relay. When did you start playing sport? Um, with a team, I suppose, maybe like in primary school, whatever teams were going there, I'd hang around after school. Um, it was usually only kind of camogie um, was the kind of sport we had in my primary school. We had a small bit of maybe basketball, but it wasn't competitive matches with other schools. So I suppose camogie for, for a couple of years. Um, and like I did Irish dancing outside school then when I suppose I maybe joined when I was about maybe six or seven. Um, and I did like modern dance as well um, outside school around maybe 10, 11 ish. So, yeah, probably seven is probably the youngest when I, I had the opportunity to join a team. Um, so funny, like literally the minute I was tall enough to hold a hurley. So my family are huge into hurling rather than um, football. Um, so the minute we were tall enough to be able to carry a stick along with us, we were thrown out into the field. Yeah. Um, but I suppose I started really in um, national school. So at Camogie at home, the first team you could play on was under 12. Um, so in national school then, though, you're a little bit younger because you had the Skeena Skull. Um, so I started playing um, when I was about nine or 10, I'd say, fourth or fifth class anyway. I started playing soccer when I was about five or six with the boys. Um, in the academy as one of the like, I think one of two girls that were playing um, and then I started running when I was in primary school and um, but then I got an injury so I had to I had to stop then after that. When did you realise you wanted to play sports? I was always super active um, always running around the place I drove my parents absolutely insane um I would just run run everywhere absolutely anywhere they try and sit me down and ask me to sing a song or something and I'd be like nope just want to run 
Um, so I was always kind of out in the estate playing around. Uh, we had huge, massive, like evergreen trees in my garden, always uh, jumping up the top of them, trying to climb up at, for as long as I can remember I was outside. So I suppose it kind of like my whole family is very sporty anyway. Like my my dad, my grandparents would have been sporty. So um, I suppose it kind of came from there. I suppose there was no realization there was kind of like not that there wasn't a choice but it was it was just what I was brought up with both my parents played hurling and football um you know even after like mom having me she went back playing um sports so I was I was reared on the side of a pitch so it was it was the done thing to do you know and being in the country you know you're just thrown to the pitch whenever there's anything on I was literally thrown in the boot with mom and dad going to all the matches. So I suppose it was instilled in me from a very young age. Um, and you know, when you're going to these things all the time, you're going to want to do what the others are doing as well. So um, it just, yeah. I suppose, not that I had no choice, but um, my dad, so my dad just used to bring me to soccer when I was very young um, and my brother and sister played as well so it was kind of my granda played as well he played at a high level so it was kind of in the family so I kind of just got into it when I when my dad brought me along um, and he used to coach teams as well so I used to be watching those and I always wanted to I was always begging him to get me to bring bring me down to play soccer um, but there was no girls team so I used to play in the boys' academy um, from when I, I think I was actually too young to even start. I think I was like the year younger than what I should have been. So I was there for two years in that age group. Um, so yeah, and then I just, I've loved it ever since. Did you ever have to play on a male team because your club didn't have enough girls to make a team? Um, well, I suppose that's a bit different with um, the kickboxing. No, in regards um, making up numbers for a team, but with kickboxing, like we all train together um, and we used to fight each other, I suppose, um, male and female, it didn't really matter. Once you kind of stepped in the door, you weren't a gender, you were an athlete. So, um, yeah, so I used to fight them all the way up. We had to fight them competitively, had to fight boys competitively, I suppose, till maybe I was maybe like 10 or so. Um, and then it was I would just fight them in training. So not with my club. Um, we always had enough girls from under 12 up, but in school, we never had enough girls to play um, to enter a girls ski and skull team until I was in sixth class. So in fourth and fifth class, I played on the boys team. Um, so it was quite an experience, but I suppose it really um, toughened me up. Now, I have a brother as well, so I was well able for the shoving, let's say, in the matches. But um, yeah, so I did have to play on a boys team because there was no girls team. It wasn't enough of us to get a team together. Yeah, so um, at that stage of soccer, I don't know if it's still the rule, but I know girls, well, girls used to be able to play up until the age of 12, like with the boys teams, um, because yeah, there, was, there wasn't enough girls to play um to make their own team but now it's a lot different there's a girls academy I think it's in Caragaline it's a few years old now but they have loads and loads of girls playing so it's really nice to see um it's a lot different to what I grew up with um and they're actually really good as well and they have like even like 212 teams and 214 teams so um it's a lot different now. Did you ever get told you couldn't play sport because you were a girl? Um, no, I don't think I was told I couldn't, but I suppose coming from like a male dominated sport, people are always extremely shocked when they find out that I was a kickboxer. Um, and I suppose I don't look like your stereotypical kickboxer either. So they just kind of assume that maybe I was just doing it for fitness or for the sake of doing it, they'd never assume that I was actually good at it, you know? It would just be like, oh, that's great, isn't it? And I was like, mm, yeah, it is. Um, no, I never got told I couldn't play. Um, always encouraged to play to, you know, to do whatever I wanted. But I suppose the one memory I do have of being not told no, but as a girl in the playground, 
like I wanted to play the matches with the lads. They'd all be playing soccer or they'd be playing curling at break time. And you'd be told no at the beginning. No, you can't play. The girls aren't allowed to play. Um, or if they were picking teams, then you'd be last to be picked. You'd never be first to be picked. Um, so I suppose that's kind of like my only memory of, say, being not being told no, but feeling, you know, the disparity between male and female. You know, that girls aren't good enough, that girls aren't as good as boys or better than boys, you know. So, but like with club or anything like that, or, you know, there was never a no, which is good. So I suppose it was just the playground, the boys being bullies. <laughs> you learn how to stand on your own two feet, though, and you just play anyway. You go on the team that has the less numbers and you row in and they forget that you're a girl once the game is on then anyway. I don't think I was ever told I couldn't play sport, um, but I do remember when I used to do summer camps and again, one of only very few girls and I was put with the boys group one time and I actually had to get my dad to ask me to swap teams because um, they wouldn't pass you the ball <laughs> because I was a girl. So uh, that was kind of my own experience of it really. Um, and they were also kind of, they were very, I suppose like they wouldn't really tackle us or anything or they kind of left us off because we were girls. Um, but yeah, I do remember they wouldn't pass me the ball. <laughs> Did you ever receive any discrimination in sport because you were a girl? Um, from time to time, yeah. It would have been more so when I was younger, I suppose. Um, again, like I said a while ago, we weren't seen as a gender in kickboxing. Like My coach was outstanding. Um, so I wouldn't have really received it in that regard. There was a few other coaches from maybe Dublin and things like that that would kind of I don't know they had their favorites and usually girls weren't them um so they kind of didn't give you much attention or feedback or anything like that just because uh, you were a girl well I suppose if you even think of and you might feel the same um like in summer camps during the summers and things like that you know you, you might be playing a game and the coach might say oh pick, pick teams or whatever and girls are usually the last to be picked unfortunately and even I've noticed that when I was in like teaching in mixed schools, I'd have to make a rule. I'd make a boy captain and a girl captain and they had to pick every second gender because otherwise the girls would be left to last, even though they were like some of them were way better athletes than any of the boys. But they just pick the boys first rather than the girls because they just assume that girls aren't good enough. Um, no, I haven't. I've never, thank God, I've never come across it. Now, like, there are huge disparities, like, within the GA between male and female. Um, you know, like, the, like, even getting pitch choices, things like that, you know, like, it was 2019, I think, was the first time the ladies footballers got to play in Parky Cueve, you know, and how long are we looking for equality between male and female within the GAA? Um, and like you'd even see it from a sport, supporter's point of view, you know, like the men's football final, All Ireland final, the hurling All Ireland final day, like tickets are like gold dust. I'd be scrambling for them myself because you want to be at the match. Whereas to go to a women's final, you'll get a ticket, no bother. You know, there's only half the crowd at it. So I've never um, experienced discrimination, no, but I suppose just in the GA scene itself, it is still quite unequal. And I suppose we just need to, we need to keep going, you know, and keep striving for equality and we'll get there eventually. But I suppose it's now the level as well, you know, girls are going to be that little bit weaker and that little bit, um, you know, we are as skillful as the men, I'm not going to say that, but, you know, and I think that that's what lacks the supporters coming then, um, you know, to our games. So discrimination there, maybe, you know, but that's from a supporter's point of view. But me, myself, from playing, I've never experienced it, thank God, no. You know, you get the odd comment, girls can't play soccer or, you know, women's, women's soccer wouldn't be as kind of, it wouldn't be followed by many people. So, you know, it's not really on the TV that much. Like, you don't see it as much, basically. Um, so me personally, not really the odd comment, but that's that was about it. Did you ever think about stopping sport because of what other people had said to you? Um, 
Uh, no, but I would be a very strong minded person, I suppose. I kind of do what I want and I don't really care what people think of me. So um, if anyone said anything to me, it would probably just spur me on, to be honest, to do to prove to them that I can do it or um, something like that. But I've seen a lot of people go the opposite way um, and just go completely introverted inside their heads and just give up because of other people's opinions. No, I haven't. And I suppose it's just, you know, coming back to like my roots and stuff like I was always encouraged to play. And like within the GA community, women are totally encouraged to play, you know, and to get involved as much as you can to enjoy it. Um, so I suppose in different sports, you could see it happening, you know, in more male dominated sports. Whereas with the GA, with Camogie and ladies football, you know, they're very much coming under the one umbrella now, which is great. So you'd never see, you know, somebody saying, no, you can't do that because you're a girl, which is good. No, no, I'd be quite stubborn. So I don't think I'd ever stop playing. Um, yeah, and I've always loved it. So no, I don't think so. Who is your biggest sporting inspiration? Um, that's a hard one, I suppose, because again, like there's not many, there wasn't many in my area in my sport, but um, like Katie Taylor only kind of started to become known when I was around maybe, I don't know, maybe like 14, 15. So um, I didn't really grow up watching her, but she's obviously a massive inspiration. And even the fact that she got that documentary on Netflix, like produced about her is like a huge step in the right direction for women in sport um Sonia O'Sullivan obviously iconic um Serena Williams one of the best athletes ever um so I suppose they'd probably be um the top three and like if you look at even Irish sport in general now like the Irish rugby team the women's obviously um I don't like calling it the women's rugby team but they're fantastic the Irish hockey team they are trailblazers like they're super so I suppose that 20 by 20 movement has done so much for women's sport in general um well I suppose I'd have to say my parents just because they instill the love of hurling into me from a very very small age but if I was to pick one um and I was thinking about this and I was like, God, who will I pick? And I was like, sure, it has to be Breach Corkery. I play with her. She is such a role model for female athletes playing both camogie and ladies football to such a high level, you know, and just taking it in her stride. Like she's 18 All-Ireland medals. Like no man can stand up and say that they have 18 All-Ireland medals, you know? So that's a huge achievement for a woman. And I suppose being a woman as well, we've a lot, more, there's less pressure on us as a dual star and we're allowed to play more freely as dual stars. Like the male or male counterparts are put under a lot of pressure to pick one sport, you know, because you have to give so much commitment to the sport. And like, I suppose Breach, like she just gave her commitment to both. She was out seven nights a week training the whole time, but she just loved the game. And like, I love, the game as well I love hurling and football you know they're a great pastime so I suppose you know having Breege as a role model is unreal you know with all her accolades and she's from my club too I, I consider her a very good friend um but someone who I'd always looked up look up to um and you know it's great to strive to be be like someone like that you know who has succeeded so much and won so much you know and she's only 30 do you know what I mean so it's great I think just like soccer wise I think Rihanna Jarrett she plays for Ireland I think she's brilliant she used to play it and she got a bad knee injury but she's come back and she's unbelievable she's like an unbelievable player um she's really good I don't know if that's because of Vera that took over management but she's excellent um or any other like women in sport I just think they're all brilliant so but she would be one of my favourites. Do you have any advice for people who are currently disengaged from sport because of COVID? Um, you just have to make a routine. Like it's all about routine and it's all about making yourself do something. 
like I am such an organized person I'm I'm a list girl like I have to have lists and lists of everything so I cross it out and every day I have on my list like whether I'm going for a walk or whether I'm going to do a workout or whether I'm going to do yoga and I have to do it to cross it off my list um, something as well, I've told a couple of my classes this already uh, that I learned only a couple of weeks ago that 15 minutes is only 1% of your day. So if you can't dedicate 1% of your day to getting up and getting some fresh air or getting some form of exercise, like that's the biggest form of self-care and self-love is dedicating 1% of your day to yourself rather than someone else, you know? Yeah, I suppose, and me and myself, I found it so, so hard. Like the motivation is really, really hard to keep going through COVID. Like our team WhatsApp groups, like they're great to be sending in stuff to us to be doing like week on week. But it's so hard, lads, to do it by yourself. Like to go out there and to go running by yourself, to go sprinting. Like we got drills there back in January of like 10 sprints that you to do, you know, like within a certain time frame, say like 20 seconds off, 10 seconds on or whatever. And you're up on the pitch and like, it, I can remember, it just started lashing rain on me. I was there by myself and I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, and it, like, it, I found it really hard to motivate myself to keep going. But I suppose the thing at the back of my head that like, I just finished the drill, got it done. I was like, we will be back together again. Like, you know, it's just to drive through it. But I can see how like, it, it, motivation is really really hard and I suppose it's just to keep going like you know and if you don't feel like going for a run today don't bother leave it till tomorrow you know if you don't feel like going fucking now even having said that though I was in foul form there the other day um at home and I was like do you know what now I'm just going out and pucking the ball off the wall I spent 10 minutes pucking the ball off the wall and I was like a new woman after because I just like the frustration when I was crossover I just took it all out on the hurley and slitter and it was great so I suppose you know if you're having a crap day or a bad time you know exercise is a huge thing to get rid of all you know the adrenaline that fucking up inside you you know so go and kick the ball off the wall get your hurley and slitter whichever and um, go for the walk or the run but like I suppose from a motivation point of view don't put yourself under pressure to you know be as fit as you were the last, you know, say finishing up in September when we were all finishing up or whatever, because it's it's hard to do it by yourself. And like once we're all back on the pitch together again, it'll be so much easier. What I would say is probably to start small and build yourself up. So it's like anything like if let's say I was teaching Irish and I started off with the like most difficult thing, like you'd just be lost and you wouldn't want to do it. So I think like start off simple build it up even if you're doing like I don't know going for like a two kilometer walk and then build it up to like three kilometers so kind of build it up and up and every bit of exercise counts and it's so good for your mental health and everything so um that's what I would say. What are your opinions on the fact that many sports are still very male dominated? Um that's a tough one I suppose if it's difficult because some sports are we'd say like classified as male sports and some as females like we say with gymnastics and things like that you'd automatically think of the likes of Simone Biles Gabby Douglas like you think of women you wouldn't think of men who are also achieving the same things I suppose um like dancing as well is seen as like a girl's thing not a boy's thing and vice versa with the, the male and female. So I think it just needs to be like instilled in both genders from a young age that you can do whatever sport you are interested in, whatever you want to do. So like, I suppose, like it is changing, like more, more women in sports that have been seen as male sports before, like even like rugby and things like that. Sure, like the Irish women's team um, and the Six Nations was only set up there, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, was it? Like maybe a little bit more. And then they won the Grand Slam then in 2013. Like it's just amazing. Like one of my friends is actually on the team. And um, like now, I suppose they're getting more competitions and people are noticing them more. But something that annoys me is, you know, with the male rugby matches, like tickets are sold out instantly like you can't get a ticket uh, everyone wants to go and like with the women's it's like oh come if you can you know like it should that shouldn't be the case it should be 
trying to make people more interested in watching women play sports. Yeah, I suppose, like, and I'm always fighting the woman's corner at home when it comes to sport. Like, you know, oh, but you're only girls. Like, oh, so you're grand, you're fine. And I'm like, no, we're just as good as men. And it's actually, it was so funny this week, Cheltenham was on, you know, and like they were on about all the jockeys and whatever. And I was actually so delighted that Rachel Blackmore won the Champions Cup on Tuesday, wasn't it? And she was the first female to do it. And her comment after, it was brilliant. It was, um, you know, the reporter asked her, oh, you must be delighted because you're a woman and you're after winning it. And she was like, it doesn't matter. We're all jockeys. Whether you're male or female, we're all jockeys. It's just how good you can ride the horse on the day and how good the horse is going to be for you. I just thought that that was a fantastic... Um, and I suppose, like, it's just... You know, it's people like that, you know, when she she won a fantastic race now and saying that they are going to make the changes for women in sport and for people's attitude to change, I suppose, you know, like and like women are becoming more involved in like the reporting of women, uh, the reporting of sport, be it male or female sport. And I suppose it's to see that, you know, and for for men not to be like, oh, it must be great because you're a woman doesn't matter you know like we can all do it the same you know whether you're male or female and I suppose it's just to change the stigma around it you know the stereotyping around it just like we can be the exact same you know because like if you think say from my point of view from hurling and camogie you know there is like that bit of strength required to play the sport and men are obviously going to be way stronger than women whereas riding a horse there's no strength required. It's how well you can ride the horse and like, you know, how well you can get on with the animal as well. You know, the relationship with the animal, you know, it doesn't matter on your strength because you have to be the lightest. I think you have to be really, really light to be a jockey anyway, you know? So like, I just thought it was a fantastic comment that, you know, we're all jockeys. It doesn't matter if you're male or female, you know? So that, that was, the, and if more women, when they get into the limelight, have that attitude and most women do because we want to be the same in terms of sport we want to be seen the same um that that'll be great i would say that it has gotten a lot better like it has but um like if you can't see it you can't be it so because women's sport isn't really like televised that much or you know there's less teams in, like less women's teams like playing different sports like for example rugby there really less women te less women's teams but like if it gets out there more if like it's shown more on television if it's talked about more then it'll become more popular because like younger girls will be able to see it and as I said if, if they can't see it they can't be it. Why do you think it's important for women to be in sport? Yeah, 100%. Um, obviously, it's not everyone's cup of tea, um, but I think it's amazing for even stress relief, um, anxiety relief, like making friends, um, just kind of like dedicating your time to something productive rather than just like hanging out in the street or scrolling on Instagram or whatever it may be. Um, and it kind of, I suppose it instills a lot of things in people like you know like you have to follow rules it like makes you dedicated to something it makes you passionate about something it teaches you hard work is like there's so many things that are like people just think oh sport is for sporty people like no it teaches you so much about life in general and like it can give you so many opportunities to even travel the world do whatever you know like you you learn so much from it so it's really really important oh like why not you know, if men can do it, we can do it too. You know, like if you love something so much, why can't you do it? You know, it, it was like when I was small, like, you know, watching mom and dad play, you know, I wanted to be out there playing as well. And then watching my brother play, I was like, well, I can do it too. I'm at home doing it with him every day, you know, pucking out the back, playing matches the whole time. So, you know, why not? I think it's just important for every person to be in sport, no matter if you're male or female or whatever. Um, 
so like it's just so important for your mental health your physical health like it's just so good for you and even like girls in school if they're doing like exams and things it does increase your brain activity and like the endorphins that are released so it is really really important um but I just suppose it would be seen that boys would play sport more but but then in certain sports like gymnastics and things it would be more more females would probably take part but I just think it's important to do any type of sport any physical activity no matter whatever gender you are or however old you are do you think that women from the past would be proud of modern women Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, I don't know, to be honest. I think yes, in in some, in most aspects. I mean, obviously, like how far are we talking? Like you know, the fact that we have we can vote and we have equal rights in most areas of society, like one hundred percent. But, um, in other regards, no. I think sometimes women kind of like they don't they give up very easily a lot of people that's male and and female these days they just kind of hang around and expect things to happen for them and that's not going to be the case nothing is going to land on your doorstep I think you need to fight for what you want and work towards what you want which is what we say those women of the past were doing and um, with regards to vote and equal rights and it's just not happening anymore in any aspect of life really oh I think hugely Absolutely. You know, because women today, like, you know, and we, we will st into the future as well, we will be fighting for equality, you know, to be the same as men, but they started it, you know, like say the Camogie and the Ladies Football Associations, they started our sport, the women way back when, when they decided, you know what, the men are doing it, we can do it too. And like the dresses that they used to wear playing Komogi, they were like big, huge aprons that they used to wear um, because that's all they had. They didn't have jerseys. They didn't have money. They didn't have gear to wear. So like, you know, they started it and look at where we are now today, you know, playing in Pro Park on All-Ireland Final Day, the exact same place as the men play. You know, before it would have been played maybe down in Tipperary or Kilkenny or, you know, could have been played in Cork. But we're centre stage with them all now, so I think they'd be huge. Now, we still have a long way to go, you know, but we are working in, like in a huge positive direction, which is great. Um, yes, I do think so. Um, especially now, it ha like women have more of a voice and it is being seen more. So I do think they would be extremely proud. Now we're going to play a game where I'm going to name <laughs> a woman in sport and you're going to guess what sport she plays. Okay, I'm going to be terrible at this one. Annalise Murphy. Oh, she's sailing. Angelique Kerber. Tennis? Is it? Okay. Sarah Fuller. Um, hockey. No, she plays American football. Oh, very good. Simone Bailey. Uh, gymnastics. Jessica Ennis Hill. Decathlon. Sonia Sullivan. Uh, well, I've long distance running. Jessica Long. Um, rugby. She's a swimmer. swimmer. Gemma O'Connor. Uh, football. Gaelic football. Hurling. Camogie. Chloe McGee. I know that name. Soccer. She plays badminton. Badminton. Leona Maguire. Um, we we'll go with soccer for her, so. She's a golfer. Golf. Cora Staunton. Football. Eastkey Britain. Um, horse racing. She's a surfer. <laughs> That's good. Sky Brown. Um, tennis. She's a skateboarder. That's cool, though.
that's, that's the end of the game. Excellent, excellent. Right, so we're going to play a game now. Okay. I'm going to name a person, a woman in sport, oh, and you're going to guess what sport she plays. Should have done my homework. <laughs> Annalise Murphy. Oh, she's the um, sailor, rower, sailor. Yeah. Angelique Kerber. Tennis. Sarah Fuller. Sarah Fuller. Oh my God. She, um, she in the rowing as well, no? <gasps> She's American football. Oops. Simone Biles. Biles. Simone Biles. That's so bad. <laughs> Um, basketball, gymnastics, God. Jessica Ennis Hill. Oh, she's a runner with the UK, isn't she? Sonia O'Sullivan, runner. Jessica Long, athletics. I don't know. <laughs> she's a swimmer. Oh, okay. Gemma O'Connor. Come on, we. Chloe McGee. Oh, she's she's a runner as well, isn't she? Or a hurdler? She's a badminton player. Oh, I thought, oh, it's McGeegan. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, go on. <laughs> Leona McGuire. Leona. Is she a jockey or a show jumper? She's a golfer. My dad will kill me. Oh my God. <laughs> or something. Footballer, ladies footballer. And now an AFL player. Eastie Britain. I don't know. <laughs> She's a surfer. Oh, Jess. Sky Brown. Sky Brown. No. She's a skateboarder. <gasps> the end of them. Oh God, see, th this is what I mean now. We need to do more work so that I know more women in sport. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. I need to do my homework, rub up my skills. <laughs> We're going to start the game now. I'm okay, gonna right, name, I'm nervous. I'm going to name a woman in sport and you have to guess what sport she plays. Okay. I'm going to be terrible at this, but anyway, go on. Annalise Murphy. Annalise Murphy, she's athletics, I think, is she? She's no. failing. Okay. <laughs> Angelique Kerber. Angelique Kerber. Um, let's see if we get here. Swimming. Tennis. Sarah Fuller. Sarah Fuller, is it? Um, I'm so bad at this. Uh, Sarah Fuller. I've heard that name. Athletics? She's American football. Right. Simone Biles. Where are you getting these names from? Um, Simone Biles. Are these all Irish women? Most. Well, some of them, like half. Most of them. Okay. What's the name again? Simone Biles. Simone Biles. Mm, basketball? Gymnastics. Right. Jessica Ennis Hill. Miss Hill. She's not Irish, is she? Um, Jessica Ennis Biles. Soccer. Athletics. <laughs> Sanya O'Sullivan. Athletics. 
Jessica Long. Jessica? Long. Long. L-O-N-G. Jessica Long. Um, Jessica Long. Soccer? Swimmer. Gemma O'Connor. Come on, yeah. Chloe McGee. Chloe McGee, I know that name. She athletics. Badminton. Okay. Leona McGuire. Leona McGuire. Rower. Golf. Cora Staunton. What is it? Cora Staunton. Cora Staunton. Soccer? Gaelic football. Eastkey Britain. Eastkey Britain. Basketball? Surfer. And Sky Brown. Sky Brown. Um, soccer? Skateboarder. Like, where was, where was I really going to get a skateboarder? <laughs> I thought everyone would know her because she's like the youngest Olympian ever. Like, she's the, she's supposed to be in the 2020 Olympics. Oh, really? Yeah, no, and she I was like the youngest Olympian or something like that. She was only like 11. Oh, really? Yeah, she's only 11 and she was supposed to be doing the Olympics. But um, <laughs> absolutely no uh, one got her. But everyone would get her. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I got two right. That was kind of embarrassing. But <laughs> thank you to Miss Waldron, Miss Barry Murphy, and Miss Drummond for joining us today. It was really interesting and I'm sure everyone learned something. Please be sure to comment below with any suggestions. Bye. Thanks for listening. See you next week.